Welcome, folks. I want to talk about group actions and, in particular, the orbit stabilizer theorem, but through examples today um, instead of through notation. So, at the beginning of class, I, you know, I talked about how groups encode the symmetries of various objects, and you can think of the symmetries of a cube as elements of a group, and um, think of symmetries as actions, as operations, as things that you can compose. You can do one symmetry and then another. Um, so when you have rotational symmetries, for example, you can multiply two rotations together, right? That's the whole point of a group. You know, you can multiply two elements in a group together and get another group element. Groups, however, also act on sets, okay? So that's what group actions refer to. Instead of studying a group where you multiply group elements together, you see how a group acts on a set. And today we'll look at how groups act on, for example, the faces of a cube or the vertices of a cube, where, where the group that we'll look at is the rotational symmetries of the cube. Okay. Another thing that we'll talk about is how to count the size of symmetry groups. So you walk, you walk along, you find a symmetric object like this cube, and you ask yourself, huh, I wonder how many rotational symmetries this cube has. I'll teach you some of the machinery that allows you to answer that. What's the number of rotational symmetries of this cube? So while I'm going through this, you can make, make your own guess. How many rotational symmetries of the cube do you think there are? Okay, so let G be the group of rotational symmetries of this cube. What's its size? We're gonna view each rotation in this rotational group of symmetries as a permutation. We're gonna think of a rotation as permuting the six faces. So let's give names to these faces. Um, one, two, three. Faces four, five, and six are, are hidden right now. And let's say I have, I have a rotation. So maybe I look at this axis right here and I rotate around this axis and maybe I rotate 90 degrees, okay? You'll notice that phase three stays fixed, right? But phase one moves over and gets mapped to where two used to be. Okay, can I draw backwards too? Let me try it. Um, phase two gets, <laughs> gets mapped to the back face right here, okay? So I'm thinking of this rotation as the permutation that's fixing phase three, but it's mapping phase one onto phase two, et cetera. Questions so far? Alrighty, so let me tell you teach you how to count the size of this group of rotational symmetries. What you do is you fix your, you pick your favorite face. So maybe face one is our favorite face, okay? And we're gonna count the number of rotations mapping face one to itself. Okay, so that's going to be multiplied by something. I'm going to write a little bit beneath there, but let's keep going. So how many rotations map face one to itself? So here's face one. If I fix face one, I could either do nothing or I could rotate by 90 degrees fixing face one or 180 degrees or 270 degrees. So, so there's four rotations that fix phase one. You know, phase one gets mapped onto itself. Right? So, so sure, I guess, I guess phase one rotates, but it still gets mapped to phase one. Phase one doesn't get mapped to phase two or phase three. Okay, we're gonna multiply that by the number of faces that phase one can be rotated to. So how many different 
places could I rotate face one? Well, I could rotate face one onto any other face, right? There's six different faces and I could rotate face one onto any of those six. So, so let me say a little bit more. This is gonna be um, um, a size of a subgroup of G called the stabilizer. Okay, stabilizer is not a bad name for this subgroup of rotations that's fixing the first face. It's stabilizing the first face. This right here is going to be called the, um, well, it's called the you know, size of the orbit. of phase one. So phase one can get mapped in different places. The orbit of phase one is all the different places that phase could be mapped. And so we're gonna be counting the size of that orbit. Another name for this is the number of cosets of which subgroup of this subgroup. Okay. So another way to think about this is using cosets, the number of cosets of the subgroup fixing phase one. Okay, so I'm introducing language that's a little bit advanced, but we'll learn about it more either later today or on Wednesday. Um, but the point is we're trying to count the number of rotations of the cube. We fix a face. We say how many rotations fix that face well, four of them do. If I fix this front face, I have four possible rotations. And then I ask how many faces could this face get mapped onto? All six different faces. And so the answer is 24. Six times four is 24. This is only counting the size of the group of rotational symmetries of the cube. It turns out that through more work, you can figure out exactly what group of size 24 you have. This group is isomorphic to S4, permutations of four elements. You know, the size of S4 is four factorial, which is four times three times two times one, or 24. Why does S4 come up? There's actually four diagonals going through this cube. Okay, so you could connect these two vertices with the diagonal or these two vertices with a diagonal, or these two vertices with a diagonal, or these two vertices with a diagonal. I guess there's a diagonal edge going through every one of the four top vertices down to one of the bottom, bottom vertices. Okay. And any rotation can be viewed as permuting those four diagonals. And any way you wanna permute those four diagonals can be realized as a rotation. It turns out. We're going to count this 24 in one other way. The perspective we're using here is that this group of rotations is acting on some set. Here our set was the six faces. Let's try counting this again where our set is instead the eight vertices and see if we get the same answer or not. So answer two. Let G be the group of rotational symmetries of this cube. What is the size of this group? Let's now instead view each rotation as a permutation of the eight vertices. Maybe I'll call my vertices A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Okay, so. G is hidden, or sorry, H is hidden. H is right here. All right. So now when I rotate this cube, I think of mapping different vertices onto each other, right? So if I rotate again around this axis, 
and I rotate say 90 degrees, then maybe I'm mapping A onto B and B onto C and C onto D and D onto A. So I'm thinking of each rotation as a permutation of these eight vertices. So the size of this group G is, we're gonna do the same pattern. We're gonna fix our favorite vertex. Okay, so let's fix our favorite vertex. Um, let's sort of think of this vertex right here. So it's going to be the number of rotations mapping vertex A to itself. Let's call this vertex A. Okay. So how many rotations map vertex A to itself? Well, I can either do nothing or I could, um, let's see, I could do this rotation. Okay or I could do this rotation. So, you know, you can sort of see that the only three rotations I could do when I fix my, this vertex at my index finger is I could take this face and map it either here or here or leave it put, right? So fixing this vertex, there's three rotations I could do. Leave this face put or put it here or put it there. Okay. So this is gonna be three. All right, so we fix a vertex and we say, how many rotations are there that map that vertex to itself? Three, there's sort of three ways I could rotate around here. Let's, let's get it. Okay, there we go. One, two, or do nothing. Three, those three rotations. Again, they are, I could start here, fix this vertex. I could do, oh man, not very good at this yet. I could do, one, <laughs> here we go. I could do one, or I could do two, or I could do three. All right. And also I need to ask not how many different, well, what's the orbit of this vertex? How many different places could a rotation take this vertex? Well. I could rotate vertex A onto any other vertex I want. So this could be, this here is the number of vertices that A could be rotated to. Okay. And I could take this vertex to itself or any of the eight vertices. So this is eight. And I again get 24. So answers one and two gave me the same answer, but they sliced it up differently. In answer one, I was thinking of my rotations as permuting faces. And I saw that I had 24 different rotations because um, if I fix a face, there's four rotations that map that face to itself. And there's six different faces that that face could get mapped onto. So I got six times four is 24. If I think of these rotations as permuting vertices instead, then there are three different rotations fixing a given vertex, and there's eight different places that vertex can get mapped. So I got the same size, 24, but this time realized as eight times three. All right, public questions? Thanks.